What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. Talking about Halloween ends in this video here again today. Going over the supernatural topics surrounding Michael Myers. Now, should Michael Myers be supernatural going into Halloween ends? And should that be something I think gets revealed? Me personally, no. I don't want to see anything like that again. I would rather them continue to stick to what they've been telling us they were trying to do when they set out to do this trilogy, which is go back to what John Carpenter's original iteration of Michael Myers was intended to be. Although, again, I see where many people are coming from, how they kind of have already stepped out of that with what they depicted in Halloween Kill. So you might as well make him supernatural or give some supernatural background. That's how some people think. And I can, again, understand where you're coming from because of the stuff that he did endure and managed to survive at the end of Kills when he was attacked by that mob. A lot of that, while I will say that's something that someone can survive, it's just that the way in which it's being depicted and how it's happening one after the next and this man is still alive, it's like, okay, you're, you're losing some of your target audience with that depiction of how you're saying he's not supernatural especially considering i think at the at one point prior to that karen had stepped on the man's neck and he was still just fine after that so i, I get it if you think that they should just make him supernatural again given how they depicted him in kills but i'm like you know just just rock with it just continue to say he's not supernatural and rock with it but i did want to go over what somebody over on reddit shout out to you cult imagery if you're listening to this had to say about them wanting to see a supernatural explanation in halloween ends and get your guys' thoughts on this so they said they want a supernatural explanation in halloween ends for why michael is so powerful they said we should come to see that michael myers is possessed by real evil but it's never revealed to us whether it's the devil himself a legion or some or one single demon so that even though we're given some context to his nature he remains an enigma now i like their thought process there with that ultimately you can tell us he's supernatural but you're not explaining the source of it like how halloween kills not kills but halloween six the curse of michael myers tried to do and i think they it was pretty much a a mess honestly halloween six the curse of michael myers and how it executed trying to give an explanation pretty lackluster to me and i know for a lot of others they thought it was lackluster too but the person continues on to say one thing we can confirm is that every time michael myers dies he gets stronger that's why when frank hawkins rammed michael myers or ran michael myers over with the squad vehicle in halloween 2018 it's shown to us that frank had actually succeeded in killing michael however we soon discover that michael's evil has always had the ability to jump from body to body momentarily during his deaths this is how dr sartain got possessed by evil in the first place they're they're, go, they're going into a theory at this point they said we're revealed that this is why sartain stabs hawkins in the neck contrary to the belief that it was due to his morbid obsession with the mystery of the shape so i i kind of like that that type of perception they have that hawkins wasn't obsessed as much as he was possessed by whatever evil had overtaken michael sartain is only a temporary pawn pawn piece to michael's evil until the original host body regains its strength to then turn on and kill sartain it's disclosed to us that michael will always resurrect somehow some way the deeper metaphor here is that evil is eternal and cannot be killed but what if we also discover that anything michael picks up can too become an extension of his evil his mask or knife whatever he touches this would bring more clarity to the final shot of halloween 2018 when we see allison holding the knife and the final shot of halloween kills when we see laurie holding the knife or the bloodthirsty town people killing an innocent man what the shape comes into contact with ultimately becomes corrupted again I i'm liking their thought process so far even though i'm not someone who would like to see this i like i like the thought process so we then find out that when karen hand handles michael's knife his evil was transferred so after the townspeople massacred michael at the end of halloween kills his soul wandered into karen i think it would be a bold and risky explanation if karen was the lone killer that slaughters all the townspeople and not michael as we were tricked into believing we only saw saw it as michael doing the killings because that was what karen was seeing shortly thereafter michael fully recovers his strength to reanimate his original body he then hunts down karen and kills her now some wishful thinking for for my ideal ending is that michael eventually kills Lori at the epic showdown in the kitchen from the trailer as he's stabbing her Lori removes the mask 
which Allison later finds and puts on. The final act should be a masked Allison stalking Michael to avenge Lori, but when Allison delivers the death blow that finally decapitates Michael, the evil within him permanently passes into Allison. The movie then concludes with Allison wearing Michael's mask and holding Michael's knife. Full circle, the cycle never stops. Credits roll, the main theme, Halloween ends. He, they go on to say the message of the franchise should be the unshakable and uncomfortable feeling that evil is deceptive and it is forever. It's an ending that keeps you guessing whether Allison is now entirely possessed by the ghost of Michael Myers or is he dead at last? I'll leave a link to this uh, discussion they put on Reddit down in the description. What do you guys think about this? Again, I'm not saying I agree with you know, doing this, I don't want to see this. I am intrigued though by the thought process behind this and how if they were to go in a supernatural route, I definitely would prefer it's done in a manner where you still have so many question marks surrounding the character of Michael Myers. You're not telling us it's con it's source. You're not telling us it's related to the source of Thorn. You're not telling us he's possessed by a demon. You're not telling us that he is or possessed by a specific demon. You're not telling us all the specifics. You tell us just enough to establish that it's supernatural, but you still, can I guess in a way, respect what Michael Myers was or John Carpenter set out for him to be as far back as that original movie. Again, I would prefer they don't really touch on it at all, but if they were to touch on it, this is this is along the lines of what I think I would prefer. If you have to dive back into that supernatural stuff and give some type of minor explanation, I'm all for that as long as a lot is still left up in the air so that way it doesn't completely step on and add to any you know, add a lot of controversy or add a lot of confusion to the story that's been told so far. And again, end up being like another curse of Michael Myers, where a lot of stuff for a lot of people doesn't make sense, leave a lot of stuff unanswered and, you know, just becomes this big. Well, what about this? What about that? If you leave enough vague and just say enough that's minor to get people understood of what direction you're trying to go in, that's probably best. Instead of just diving all the way into a complete full 100 percent answer of what's wrong with Michael Myers and why he is the way he is. But again, I prefer they don't touch on the supernatural stuff at all. But let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.